Well, this news was broken by our upcoming guest. 49ers wide receiver Brandon Ayuk has officially requested a trade. One year remaining on his rookie deal, he's been seeking an extension similar to what other top wide receivers have gotten this offseason. The two sides have spent the offseason in negotiations. No deal's been reached. Veterans expected to report in one week. Ayuk set to make just over $14 million this upcoming season. Wide receiver contracts continue to skyrocket this offseason. No exception. Justin Jefferson's deal set the record for the highest non-quarterback salary in NFL history. You know, in addition to Brandon Ayuk, other big names like C.D. Lamb, Jamar Chase, Amari Cooper, and T. Higgins all do for significant extension. Good guy, that Mike Garofalo. So I said the IU trade request was broken by our upcoming guest. That guest, of course, is our friend from the NFL Network, Mike Garofalo. And Mike, before we get into the nuts and bolts of that trade request, uh, you were on the Rich Eisen show with your <laughs> friend Tom Pelissaro. Uh, after you had broken the trade request, let's take a listen to what happened. Well, immediately Chris Brockman asked me on the air here, Mike, uh, you know, yeah. where, where is he most likely to get traded to? And my answer was, I don't know. As Mike tees up his ball. This is fantastic this is theater. Awesome. You're going to watch this. You're going to watch this shot. Absolutely. Can, you, can, you, can we back it up? Now watch this draft. Yeah, well, oh. hold on. Let's see if we can do it this way. What do you think? All right, here we go. Mike Garofolo on way, the is, tee. This is the peak this is of a lot of This is a lot content. of pressure here. There are trucks freeway? on the freeway. There is netting, so he's not going to kill anyone with this shot. A little over the top. How do we hit it, Garofolo? Pull it. That's going to play nicely. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, great legs, Garofolo. That's your new nickname. Terrific stuff in the short shorts. How did the round go overall? Uh, not great. Uh, I spent a lot of time. It, it was actually on the second hole, I want to say, when I first got notification that, hey, this is coming. I actually heard er earlier in the morning, but it got notification like this is coming down right now. I'm like, of course it is. I just started my round. Whatever. At that point, I'm just trying to get some swings in uh, because we're that close to training camp where you know it's not going to be an uninterrupted round. Uh, so I just kind of went with it. Now, I was playing. If you watch that whole clip, I'm playing with a, a rando, as they called him. His name was Alex. And Alex had no idea what was going on. I didn't explain it to him. I didn't tell him what I do for a living or anything like that. I then came clean after everything was done. Uh, he was totally cool. Uh, I had said in the clip there, it looked like he was getting annoyed with how I was playing this round. He was totally cool, totally chill with it. A Commanders fan who then wanted to know if Brandon Ayuk was going to wind up in Washington. So that all kind of came together nicely. But uh, Alex no longer a rando, uh, now a, a uh, longtime friend of mine. And maybe we'll play golf again soon without the interruption. You know what? I love that. I love that way of making friends on the golf course. Uh, and, you know, he had a breakout season, Brandon <laughs> Ayuk did, right? And now he wants out yeah. of San Francisco. You know, we talked about negotiations going on all off season, Mike. Uh, how did it get to this point with Ayuk that he made this request? And where do you think he's likely to be traded to? The Niners did make a run at this earlier in the offseason, and it was before a couple of wide receiver deals had gotten done. And, and the offer was in the $26 million per year range. And then you saw Devontae Smith at 28, Jalen Waddell at 28, Amon Ross St. Brown was right around there uh, as well. And Brandon Ayuk's offer from the 49ers was below that. Never mind the Justin Jefferson deal and what Jamar Chase and C.D. Lamb are going to wind up getting. It was really about that second tier at the wide receiver spot. And they just weren't there to where those other guys had gotten. So Ayuk, around the draft, we talked about him as a potential uh, trade chip, the, a guy that could get moved during the draft. The 49ers shut down any team that called at that point. So Ayuk is saying, all right, well, they're going to give me my money eventually. Didn't come. They did have a meeting both sides recently in which I'm told both sides wanted to get things off their chest. And it was like, OK, well, we reset the table. Now let's make another run at a contract. And the 49ers did not make an offer between then that meeting and where we are right now, which is right up against the start of training camp. So Ayuk said, you know what? At this point, I haven't made an official request. You know, he understood that there were other teams that were willing to pounce if the 49ers would have allowed it to happen, but no real formal trade, trade request until Tuesday. Finally, that trade request made by Brandon Ayuk. Now, I don't think, based on what I know from what the 49ers have said publicly and privately, I don't think that anything's going to change and they're going to say, nope, we're not going to honor this and you're going to show up for training camp and I believe that he will. 
Now, what happens beyond there? We've seen guys who are upset show up for training camp and basically stage a hold in. We've seen that with the 49ers before, Joey uh, and Nick Bosa, excuse me. They also had the trade request from Debo Samuel a couple of years ago, I believe it was, two years ago. Uh, and they were able to get to a point where they patched that up and got themselves a contract extension done. So they believe that in the end, whenever that is, whether it's before week one or maybe it's even next offseason when they could franchise tag Ayuk, that they'll be able to work this out and get a deal done eventually. We are not there right now. We'll see how this plays out, Jay. So assuming that... Uh, everything you just said falls apart for our friend John Lynch and company, and they can't get a deal done yeah. with him, and the season starts and Lynch decides, okay, i got to trade this guy. Are there any likely destinations yeah. in your mind, Mike? Yeah. Well, Pittsburgh was interested at one point, from my understanding, then kind of pulled out. This was before the draft, uh, from my understanding. They had kind of pulled out at that point. Uh, Washington would be interested, but that's a lot of money for them to take on, given that they had spent uh, a lot in free, ag uh, free agency elsewhere. Um, the Jets may have been interested if they didn't give a ton of money to Mike Williams, which they did in free agency. So we'll see where these teams are if we potentially get into the season, right, and nothing is done, and this is a trade deadline type of deal. Uh, there's a couple of stages, Jay, along the way. But as I sit here right now, I still believe Brandon Ayuk come week one is going to be a San Francisco 49er. Beyond that, we'll see what happens. Okay, so many good vibes around the Las Vegas Raiders this offseason, Mike. Antonio Gates, yeah. new culture, everyone feeling good about things. And then all of a sudden we're getting rumors about Devontae Adams potentially being traded away. Uh, any chance <laughs> this actually happens? Some speculation. Uh, I don't believe, no, that anything is going to happen in the near future. Now, I did talk about the trade deadline with Brandon Ayuk. Maybe we get into the season and maybe things don't go so well for the Raiders and Antonio Pierce uh, potentially uh, early in the season up to that trade deadline. And they could be looking to be sellers at that point. Maybe you've got a team that's got a need or the Jets with Aaron Rodgers, who, from my understanding, theoretically, not that he's potentially pushing to get this deal done with the Jets, but theoretically, you know, in, in a world where there isn't a salary cap and there's plenty of uh, uh, incentives or uh, uh, chips to give up in a trade, that he would welcome a reunion with Devontae Adams, but there's a lot that's going to have to go into that. We're just not there at this point. I saw his agents uh, sent a statement to ESPN today, shutting it all down and saying he expects to be a Raider. So for now, no, I don't believe anything is going to happen with Devontae Adams. Could this potentially be something that we are talking about, Jay, you and I midway through the season as the tra uh, training deadline approaches? Yeah, maybe we could. But right now, there is nothing in the offing for Devontae Adams, who will be a Raider. All right, that's music uh, to the ears of Raiders fans. As we get closer to training camps, Mike, what are some of the other big storylines that you are watching? Uh, it's position battles, right, as you get into training camp, and really it's the quarterback position battles that you're looking at. And there are a handful around the league. There are, you know, five or six teams that I can't tell you right now who the starting quarterback is going to be. But I do find a couple of them most interesting. Pittsburgh is, is obviously the most interesting one because mm -hmm. you've got a couple of guys who have been starters in the league before in Russell Wilson and Justin Fields. And you just know. You just know, especially because Mike Tomlin loves to play his starters and key backups in the preseason, that Justin Fields is going to get a ton of time in the preseason on the field. And you've seen what he has done, even if it's just something with his legs and not necessarily from the pocket and winning. He's going to make sensational plays in the preseason. I know he is. And that's just going to further the conversation for should he take over Russell Wilson as the starting quarterback. Russell is in the pole position. I believe that that's the phrase uh, that Mike Tomlin used. I expect him to stay there, but I think we're going to have some fun talking about this one in the preseason. The other one I find interesting, I mean, I find Denver interesting as well, but the other one I find interesting uh, is the Vikings with Sam Darnold and J.J. McCarthy because you hear this chatter around the league from coaches and personnel guys who say, Sam Darnold still has potential, ability, that hasn't been tapped into. Well, yeah. if Kevin O'Connell and these targets that he's got in Minnesota can't tap into that, it's never going to be tapped into. So we're, we're going to find out uh, in the short term if Sam Darnold really does have that potential and ability still left because you can't ask for a better situation than he has got with the Minnesota Vikings. Man, you can't ask for a better NFL reporter than Mike Garofolo. And Mike will be back <laughs> with us in September when we return from vacation ahead of week one of the NFL season. So, Mike, I hope for you that means lots more games on the course, uh, lots more short shorts, <laughs> and lots more randos who suddenly become your friend. I was once a rando. Now we're friends, and it's a magical thing, buddy. 
you were a rando for about 30 seconds, and then, my God, we just became best buds, and I hope we always are, Jay. Me too, pal.